game of singles is a critical official. A good marker will make a game, whilst a bad marker can ruin a game, and as players we have the right to expect the best standards you can reach. You will no doubt have been involved in marker club competitions or may have already been an experienced marker at a high level. Whatever standard you are, the following principles will identify the skills you need to become a good marker. You should be familiar with the duties of a marker, which are clearly defined in Law 55 of the Laws of the Sport of Bowls. We will show you some general principles of marking, together with your role before, during and after a game, plus some tips on time management and mastering lollipops. Your duty as a marker starts at home. If you look smart, you will work smart. You should arrive at the club in plenty of time before the scheduled start of the match. Introduce yourself to the officials from the governing body, your fellow markers and the umpires on duty. If an umpire has not been appointed, you will need to identify a competent person to use in the event of a dispute. Before stepping onto the rink, ensure you have the following equipment with you. Chalk, ideally spray chalk, a box measure, a few wedges, a pen or a pencil, a coin, a scorecard and a holder if required, and lollipops if requested by the governing body. Make sure loose change, wallets and mobile phones are locked away safely and do not take them onto the rink. Hi, I'm Alan, I'm your marker. Introduce yourself to the players you'll be marking for. You should ask their permission to mark touches as they come to rest and remove dead balls from the ditch. The players will give you time to perform these duties if they know you are going to do them. If you are using lollipops, you can tell them that they are for the benefit of the spectators and indicate your opinion. During the trial ends, indicate to the players the distance that each bowl comes to rest from the jack and then remove them and place them in a group near the ditch. If a bowl is going to hit the jack, Allow it to do so, or pick the jack up and replace it when the bowl has passed. Do not stop the bowl, as the player will not know how far it would have travelled. Wish each player a good game as you pass them at the completion of the trial ends. At the start of each end, the marker should ensure that the mat has been placed on the centre line. If it's more than a quarter of a mat off the line, then ask the player to centre it. Avoid moving the jack large distances when the player is trying to centre it. It is quicker to move the jack slowly until the player confirms its centre position. Some rinks have a centre line marked, making the centering much easier. Remember the front edge of the jack must be placed on the 2 metre mark or level with the end of the 2 metre stick. Avoid centering the jack with your foot. Placing the jack on the end of a 2 metre stick is also incorrect. During the delivery of the first few bowls, the marker should stand about 1 metre to the side and 1 metre past the jack. This provides an ideal position for moving forward with a single step to check the distance of a bowl or to mark a toucher quickly. A single step forward and a step into the head as a toucher comes to rest will mean that you can mark it as soon as it comes to rest without delaying the player on the mat. Whilst marking a toucher, make note of its proximity to the jack. Doing this will avoid the need to step back into the head if the player asks a question about its position. It is important to give the players accurate information. Alan, how far was the last bowl past the jack? The gap is five inches, Vic. The distance of a bowl in relation to jack high makes a big difference to the shot the player will play. Look at these two bowls. The short bowl requires a little more weight in order to obtain the shot, whereas the bowl just past jack high requires an exact draw. There is only a difference of 3 to 4 inches between them, but a big difference in the weight required to play the shot. Whilst the laws say that a marker should answer specific questions, we should also use some common sense. Look at the bowls here and listen to the conversation between player and marker. Alan, am I holding shot? 
No. Am I one down? No. Who old shot then? Blue. What's the situation at the head? Two shots. Now listen to this alternative answer and decide for yourself which you prefer to hear as a player. Alan, am I holding shot? No, you're two down. This is an example of what can go wrong when a marker takes up the wrong position on the rink during a drive. Notice how he is unable to correctly identify the toucher as he is busy avoiding injury. Now see the difference moving in front of the head makes. The marker is protected from injury and he has had a clear view of the toucher as it travels into the ditch. He should not be concerned with any other balls as the toucher is the important object to identify. The marker should now follow a simple sequence to ensure that everything is dealt with. Firstly, he marks the toucher in the ditch and places a bowl indicator on the bank. Next, any dead bowl should be removed from the ditch or recovered from the neighbouring rinks. Finally, the position of the jack should be indicated on the bank if it is live in the ditch. Alternatively, the end is declared dead or the jack is placed on a respot mark if the competition requires it. To recap, mark the toucher in the ditch and indicate its position. Remove dead bowls. Indicate position of the jack or respot if required. After all the bowls have been delivered in an end, the marker should wait for the players to agree the shots. If it is likely that the players will require a measure, then the marker should remain at the head and be prepared to wedge any leaning bowls. Allow the players to measure, measure himself, or call the umpire. Here, the marker is preparing for a measure. He is wedging all bowls that are not laying on their flat surface. At the same time, he is asking the players to remove the bowls that they don't wish to be considered. After completing the measure, it is important for the marker to indicate to the players what he believes to be the shot bowl. This bowl must not be removed by the marker as the players may wish to ask an umpire to measure. Once confirmed by the players, the marker removes his wedges and indicates the score to the players before leaving the head. Sometimes a player may request 30 seconds to elapse before any measuring takes place. Notice the marker has already looked at his watch as the shot bowl is leaning away from the jack and may fall. Here, the opposing player is asked for 30 seconds to see if that bowl will fall. As soon as that period has elapsed, the marker will wedge the bowl. Don't forget that the 30 seconds applies from the time that the last bowl to be played has come to rest and it applies to any leaning bowl in the head. A good marker will be able to manage their time on the rink efficiently, resulting in a professional performance and allowing the game to run smoothly. Here are a few time management techniques for you to use when marking. At the completion of an end, and if it is clear of the result, the marker may position himself forward of the head ready to walk up the rink. Notice he indicates to both players what he believes to be the shot and seeks their agreement. As soon as he has their agreement, he can walk down to the other end. Notice what happens if the marker remains at the head to write the scorecard. Both players have kicked the balls back and have laid the mat down ready to deliver the jack. The marker is delaying play by marking the card here. He is not concentrating if he cannot remember a number between one and four whilst walking up the rink. Here the marker can be seen picking up the mat left by the players. Notice how he turns to look back up the rink. He can quickly see if the other mat has been centred. If it does need centering, then he can do that when he has reached the centre marker on the bank. The marker now has the time to adjust the scoreboard if required. If there is a scoreboard at both ends of the rink, then the marker could ask the players to adjust one of them. After the jack is delivered, the marker has approximately 10 to 15 seconds to complete the scorecard before he needs to centre the jack. He subsequently has a further 10 to 15 seconds before the first bowl comes to rest. 
There should be ample time to complete the card. Lollipops are used to indicate the state of play during an end and the result of an end to the spectators. Like all aspects of marking, perfecting their use will result in a more professional image. In this short segment we will show you how to indicate shots during and at the completion of an end. A marker's primary responsibility is to the players and so it is important to choose the correct moment to approach the head without disturbing the players. It is appropriate to move into the head during any gaps in play or when a player is returning to the mat after visiting the head and facing the mat. It is not appropriate to move into the head when a player is about to deliver a ball, when a player is inspecting the head, when the player is walking backwards to the mat while still focusing on the head. This marker will demonstrate how to indicate between one and four shots. Firstly one shot to blue. Notice the position of the lollipops in relation to the marker's head and shoulders. Now two shots to blue. Notice the angle of the two lollipops separated by one finger. Three shots again with a wide angle between them. And finally four shots. Now some common mistakes. Here the marker is holding the lollipops too high and waving them about. Similarly, if you hold them too low or against your body, then they will not be seen. Who's holding shot? Now the marker is using the lollipops to answer a player's question. Answers to questions should be given verbally and then backed up by the use of lollipops if time allows. At the completion of the end, the marker does not need to gesture to the scoreboard assistants. They can see the number of shots when the marker walks up the rink normally. Finally, only show the number of lollipops required. Here the marker uses a third paddle as a handle. This is an incorrect indication of two shots. At the completion of an end, the marker should receive confirmation of the result of the end from the players and then make his way swiftly up the rink showing the lollipops. The lollipops can be turned 90 degrees to show the spectators watching from the side of the rink. At the completion of the game, the marker should congratulate the winner and commiserate with the loser. He should then complete the scorecard and ask both players to sign. This card has been completed correctly. The players' names are correct, the scores for each player add up correctly and the total is entered at the bottom of the card. The end time of the game has been added and both players have signed. This card is now ready to be given to the controlling body.